So I want to talk to you guys about large speakers. Why do they have to be this big? Because that's they're cool. It, besides the cool factor, that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. We got Matthew Pose here. He came down to the Audioholics Smart Home Theater Room. We're here checking out these massive speakers, two sets of massive speakers here. This one is RTJ, this one is RBH. Why do we have to have such big speakers, Matt? What is the deal? Are we compensating for something or is there a real purpose to having speakers this size? I mean, some people may be compensating, but we have a purpose. Okay. Well, here's the thing I want to talk to you guys about. We, everybody knows that you need large drivers to produce bass. It's obvious that you need big drivers, big cabinets, big displacement to get high SPLs for bass. But what's not always known is why do you need to have so much driver surface area for the mid-range, for the tweeter? What's the deal with that? Can't you just get by with like a four inch mid and a one inch tweeter and call it the day? That's the real question. Yeah. Well, when you start getting to bigger rooms, basically you have to have bigger speakers to be able to play loud enough and it scales across the board. The other thing, which is part of what we see with this speaker is that the waveguide size will dictate the directivity down to lower frequencies. So you need a really big waveguide to be able to control the, the direction the sound basically emanates from that speaker down at lower frequencies. So this is necessary, not to play really, really loud or to look really cool, but actually to get the end result they're looking for. So the reality is this horn or waveguide, or whatever you want to call it, because it's so large, it actually plays down to like 600 hertz, as opposed to most tweeter waveguides that play down to like two kilohertz, right? Right, yeah. Then typically you don't get any directivity control below, at best, maybe two, three kilohertz with most of those really small like six inch or smaller waveguides. This one is what, 21 inches? Yeah. And at that size, you're able to get good directivity control down well below one kilohertz, down into the six to 800 hertz range. And that allows you to then cross the, the uh, tweeter over to it at a lower frequency to match directivity of these 10 inch drivers better. It also allows you to get more output because the waveguide is providing some amplification. So that all adds up together to a speaker that in a large room is gonna give you the control you need and the output you need to avoid any kind of compression. The other thing too is the way this speaker is designed uh, because of the large waveguide playing down low and the crossover points are well away from the critical mid-range band. So a lot of speakers have a crossover point at let's say two kilohertz. And if it's not done right, you can hear phase anomalies so this avoids all that together because I think the tweeters cross over at six kilohertz and the mid-range is crossed over like 600 hertz. So it's well within the band of audio. The vocal band is within 100 hertz to four kilohertz. Yep, so, so you're basically covering that with one speaker driver, essentially. Right. And that's providing you with uh, most of what you hear so you get better sound quality, ideally out of something like that. So a speaker this large, do you have to, how far do you have to be away from it? Because you know how speakers have to acoustically converge. Yeah. You have all these drivers, you have two mids up here, two mids or mid bass drivers down here, and this big wave guided horn. Do you have to be 10 feet away, 15 feet away? How far do you have to be for it to converge? Well, I think if, if people didn't understand how the speaker worked, they probably would assume you'd have to be 20 feet away, something like that, which could be true under certain circumstances. But in this case, because the crossover point is so low on these mid bass drivers relative to this large waveguide, the far field on the speaker is not actually gonna be all that far out. It's essentially a point source here. So you're gonna get a far field probably by within two meters. And, uh, and it may be sooner than that. And so at any reasonable listening distance of let's say 10 feet, which is probably gonna be anything you put this in, I would assume people are saying yeah. at least, we'll say nine to 10 feet away, they're easily gonna be in the far field of the speaker. So it really shouldn't be an issue sitting uh, at those kinds of normal distances. There's not gonna be no coupling problem, if you will. And it has to do with wavelengths and, and basically spacing. The wavelengths at five, 600 Hertz are so long that the spacing is not an issue and you will have coherence at your seat. So this driver itself, it's not just a tweeter, it's a mid-range and a tweeter. It's a coaxial compression driver. So essentially there is a mid-range and a tweeter built into one. They're two annular rings, and that allows this to work like a point source. Right, so 
I talk a lot about coaxial drivers and I, and I feel like small coaxial speakers have their place as a near field monitor, mostly because when you're dealing with a coaxial speaker, it's usually a five or a six inch mid bass driver with a tiny neodymium slug tweeter in the middle. Those are great for near field, but they tend to dynamically compress in large rooms when you start really driving them hard. This is the exact opposite of that. This gives you that point source sound that you like in a coaxial driver, but you have the dynamic range because you're dealing with a much bigger, basically a bigger motor system, right? This is it's a huge, huge magnet in yeah, there. Yeah, there's actually, the motor system on this, if you pull this out, would look like that of a typical residential speaker's woofer magnet. Uh, it's a very large Nyamia magnet on the back of it. And as a result of that, you're actually getting uh, significantly better power handling than you would out of these. I mean, this speaker handles over a thousand watts. I think it's 1200 watts RMS. And, uh, you know, it'll do 140 decibels. I mean, it's going to play 140 dB. I knew that would get you going. <laughs> so it, it'll play more than loud enough for anybody's needs without compression, which right. again, may seem excessive, but when you get into really large, that's 140 dB at this one meter distance. Let's yeah. Say. When you're talking about a system where you're going to be sitting 20 feet away, and you've got 10,000 cubic feet to fill, this actually is a necessary level of output. Matt, Matt is extreme necessary. He, is, <laughs> he has to have extreme basaholic rating or above, and, and I must confess I'm the same way. That's why we have large speakers in here. The whole idea of this room is to show you what state of the art can be represented in here. That's why we bring the very best equipment in here, and that's why we have Jeff here showcasing this new speaker system for us. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to give you kind of an uh, overview into why speakers need to be this large when you want to have that kind of dynamic range, not just in the bass frequencies, but for the entire audio band. So that way when you play live recorded music, whether it's Miles Davis or Pat Metheny, or you're listening to Dead Mount 5, or you're listening to um, uh, Planet Dada, we were listening to before from That's Yellow. True. You get the full scale audio in here with no compression, no distortion. In fact, the only thing we have to worry about in this room is shut is tripping breakers. And we tripped yeah. a couple of 20 amp breakers because we had like four kilowatts of power coming out just for the subwoofer amps. So you better make sure if you put a system like this, you power it accordingly. I think if you could do 220 volts in your house to run amplifiers like this, that's the ideal situation. But if not, you should have at least two, maybe three dedicated 20 amp lines that go back to the breaker that don't connect to any of the can lights in the ceiling. That way you're not gonna be tripping your uh, amplifiers when you're putting on some amazing demos for you or for your friends. Right? I agree, absolutely, got it. But this is a custom install product. So hopefully the custom installer is you know not an idiot. And yeah, exactly. So yeah, I mean, a speaker like this is large and massive and it kind of sticks out in the room, but this speaker is really designed to go behind a screen, an acoustically transparent screen. We have it obviously out here to show you guys and to do a demo here. It's not something that's going to stay long term, unfortunately, but we will give you the coverage on the speaker. We're going to have several other videos on this. We're going to give you our listening impressions, do a little bit about the design overview. And Matt, thanks for dropping some knowledge here about why you need large speakers. I hope this gives you guys some ammunition. So if you're gonna go tell your wives or you're gonna to try to justify your purchase at home, this is why you need a large speaker. It's justified. It's not just for compensation of anything. It's actually to give you some real lifelike dynamics for the entire spectrum of sound, not just for bass. So guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please like, please thumb it up, share this video, tell all your friends about it, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. We really appreciate your support. You get direct access to us if you wanna ask questions or suggest video topics. And until next time, my friends, keep listening. Stop and you ready, Jeff? In shot okay at the moment. Can you check this one to make sure we're good here too? Probably need to be a little closer yeah, to me. You ready? Let's go. All right. Advanced video editing we've done on the channel. That was that was warm up. Right. So he's in frame. We're both in frame on that one. Yeah. Okay. So how do you stop this? Just, just hit the red button. Red circle. Are we both in frame? Matt yeah. is Matt fully in frame. We're just making it up as we go. That's what we do at Audioholics. There's no scripts here. You see nothing in my pockets. That's it. All right.